All right, so in this section, we're going to be learning about web sockets. So let's get started. Before we do, I wanted to draw it out. So the way this is going to work, we're going to have a web socket server, which we'll represent in purple. That'll be like our node server. And I'm going to change colors. We'll use that. And we're going to have a bunch of clients. And the way it'll work is a message will be sent from the from one of the clients to the WebSocket server. So we'll call this uh, one. So that'll be step one. And then the server, the WebSocket server, will broadcast whatever that message is to all the clients. And that will be step two. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's the WebSocket server that we're going to use. And I'll show you the code for it. It's pretty simple. So it's just this right here. So it makes a connection. And then once it's connected, it will um, basically use this on message. So whenever it receives a message, it will call this function called update client. That'll loop through all the clients and send a message if the socket is able to receive a message. So let's turn on our web server. And then I'm going to use a service called NROC. And NROC will allow me to basically make this web server publicly available for a period of time. Um, you'll have to set up your own NROC account. I'll have a link to do that in the video. So I'm going to do HTTP 3000. And the reason I'm doing 3000 is that our WebSocket server is using port 3000. So now it's ready. I have the URL right here. So now I'm going to go to my smart WebSocket client extension. And you have to type in WS colon slash slash and then the URL. And it looks like I've been playing around with this. So let's do that right there. And then got them both connected. So just like the drawing that I drew, if I send something like hello, both these two um, um, sockets, think, uh, clients connected to the socket should see receive hello. And they do. So I'll show you here. If I send in blue, you can see they both receive blue. All right, with that being said, let's get started on building our app. So I'm going to dismiss this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to have an H1 tag. It says hello chat. We'll have an input for the type of text. And we're going to bind the value to message. We don't have message created yet. So let's create it. And you can see it says world. So we know it's working. We're also going to need a bunch of messages to loop through. We'll set that equal to nothing. And let's see, we'll also need a button. And the button will say send message. And then we'll need a function for sending the message. And do that. And let's just make sure this is working. So that when we click the button, it should console log send message. So I'm going to pull up our console, click that, it, it is working. Okay, so that's good. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our store. And this will be responsible for broadcasting the uh, WebSocket message. So I'm just going to call this store.js. And we'll just keep it really simple. And we're going to use a writable store. And we need to import that from slash store. And this writable store will store uh, messages. And it will default to nothing. So it will only store the current message, but it will default to no message because by default there is no message. The next step is to We'll do an export default and we want to 
the only thing from the store we want to export is the subscribe function because we don't want um, any component setting the value of the store. We could use a readable store, but it's kind of a pain because you can only update it in one place, and if the socket goes away, it, it just it kind of gets messy. So I think this is a better approach, but that's just my opinion. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a website uh, WebSocket uh, client. So we'll do that by typing a new WebSocket and the URL. And let's get that from our terminal. So it's this right here. Now because uh, Svelte REPLs use HTTPS, we have to use WW, WSS, which stands for WebSocket Secure and then the URL. And then let's go to the documentation page, which is right here. So you can see right now we have our WebSocket. The uh, constructor takes in a URL. Um, you've got connecting and open. So these are the, uh, these are represented in the ready state function. So we know that if it's zero or one, we can send messages to it. There's two built-in method, uh, methods, a close method, which will close the connection, and a send message, which will send data. And then we have a bunch of events, and we can use um, add event listener to access those events. And we have a handy example right here that we can copy. So let's copy that. And this will listen to the open event and listen to the, uh, to the uh, message event. So for the open event, we're just going to do a console.log. And we're going to say it's open. Okay. And for the on message event, what we'll do is we'll set the store's value to the message. So if I undo this, you can see the actual message is stored in event.data. So all we have to do is say message store dot set event dot data. And we also want to send a message. So I'm going to create a function called send message. And what that'll take in is a message, which will just be a string. And we only want to send it if the socket's open. So we'll say socket dot ready state is less than or equal to one. There's probably a better way of doing that, but we'll just use that for now. And then we can just use socket.send and we can send the message. The next step is to export that function as well. So we'll export that as send message. And we need to Im exp import that into our store. And we'll also import the on mount function because we only want the store to become activated once it has uh, mounted. And on mount is a basically takes in a callback, and that callback will be called once the DOM has completely loaded. So we'll do on mount from Swelt, and we'll also import our store from dot slash store dot js. Oops. And I misspelled Swelt, so that's why we're getting that error. So let's use our on mount function, on mount. And then the store has a thing that we're exporting called subscribe, and the subscribe will be called anytime the message gets updated. So we'll say store.subscribe, and we'll call this current message. And then we'll say, we'll put these up here so it's a little bit more clear. But we'll say um, messages equals mess dot dot dot, which will copy all the messages into a new array. And then we'll say current message. So we'll put the message at the bottom. And we're seeing it's open, so that's good. So now that we have this working, we need to, anytime we um, send a message, uh, anytime the button gets clicked, we need to send a message. But we'll do a little check to make sure the message is not blank. So if the message dot length is greater than zero, 
will allow it to send the message. So we'll say store.send. Let me make sure that's what it is. Oops, it's send message. Good thing I checked. And we'll put in the message. Okay. So now what we should be able to do is send the message. But we're not going to be able to see these messages, so let's loop through them. So what I'm going to do is um, loop through them. So I'll use an each tag. So each message is as message. And we'll close the each. And we'll just do a P. And we'll just output message. Okay. So it looks like that's good. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to send a message called hello, and it should just appear here. Oops. So it looks like we got an error. So current message is not defined. Wonder, let me see. So that worked. Um, I'm going to save this. I think that might be like a weird um, thing. So I'm going to save this as WebSocket YouTube example. Let's save it. So let's see if this works now. I'm going to refresh the page. And we're going to say hello world. And let's see. Okay. So that's looking good. And then hello, and that's looking good. So this would be a good challenge. See if you can um, um, create a special component to display the messages, where maybe one message is right here and the other message is right there. So go ahead and try that as a challenge, and uh, I'll do that really quick in the, uh, the next section. Okay, let's do it. So we're just going to do this quick challenge. I just could not resist, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so we'll do an export let message. And we'll do an export let uh, direction. And the direction, we'll see what that will do in a second. So we're just going to have an inline style. And we're going to say float. And then the direction. And we'll default the direction to left. And then we'll output the message. And then we will import our message. Okay, so now we should be able to do this. And we want. Because uh, the prop name is the same name as the variable, we should be able to do that. And let's see, we won't get the direction, but if we change this to right, hopefully we'll see it go to the right, just to make sure the CSS works. Okay, that's looking good. So now we need to make it go on odd or even. So I'm gonna look up in the examples, Let's see if we can find it because I forgot how to do it. Each, and it looks like you can have this i variable, and the i is the actual index. So that's a good way of doing it. So let's see i, and I'm going to take out these extra p tags, and I'm going to say direction equals if i dot percent two equals zero we'll say left otherwise oops forgot the zero part <laughs> otherwise equal right okay so let's see hello and then let's see uh, hello world. 
Okay, so I don't think we want to use uh, float right, so that's wrong. Let's use text align. I think that's probably what we want. So let's try hello, and then hello world, and then hello you. Okay, so that's our socket server. Let's test it out. Uh, first we'll save it. And I'm going to open this up in a new REPL right here. And we'll put this on two screens so we can see it in action. We'll refresh. So in theory, I should be able to do hello. And you can see they both say hello. And then world. They both say hello world. So that's cool. Um, you might want to have a name here so you can make it more conversational. I'll let you do that. Uh, the only thing I want to do is um, add some notes, which I'll do on my own. But I want to clear out the message every time uh, a message is sent. So I'm going to say message equals quotes. And I'll save that. And let's refresh. So. Now when I send a message, hello, you can see that, and then it disappears. So now if I say blue, you can see that. So that's how you use uh, sockets in Swelt. Hope you found this um, video entertaining and helpful. I'll post a link to all the REPLs and uh, some uh, helpful uh, comments as well. And uh, I'll catch you on the flip side.